Yes. Our next guest accusing the White House is social media team of trying to suppress conservative voices and critics of its COVID policy. And he's one of two state attorney generals filing a civil suit against the administration. It's our pleasure to welcome in Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry, who is live uh, in the studio with me this evening. General Landry, it's great to have you with us. Um, I want to get to your lawsuit in, in just a moment, but it's interesting as well because now Newsmax is experiencing a sense of censorship is exactly what this lawsuit is about. I mean, what are your thoughts on, on this type of censorship? Well, number one, y'all are experiencing <clears throat> corporate censorship, right? And this is because there are corporations out there who want to do the government's job or their boardrooms want to engage in government policy rather than de determining what's best for their shareholders like profit. This case that we engaged in, I joined uh, this case was uh, a culmination of cooperation between me and then Attorney General Eric Schmidt, who's now a U.S. Senator. In fact, I saw Eric last night while I was here in the Hill. This case seeks to determine the, the length under which the federal government went about censoring Americans as they debated the policies and the effects that government had on their lives. So whether it dealt with the Hunter Biden laptop, whether it dealt with COVID-19 policies, right? Vaccinations, um, therapeutics, uh, what was working, what was not, mask. As we debated, as Americans went out there and debated, just exercised their First Amendment in a virtual public square, the government was censoring that and on, and what we're finding now, in the election space. So this is a case that, and I had said it all along, that it's going to keep showing the American people the reach that the federal government now has. And it's troubling because if the federal government can go out there and quell our First Amendment speech this way, then the First Amendment really does not exist. Let me ask you about this because you wrote an opinion piece on this in the New York Post, and you talk about how the social media team at the White House, there was a member who actually reached out to Facebook and right. who said to them, I want you to remove this clip from Tucker Carlson's show. Right. The person at Facebook wrote back and said, it doesn't meet our standard requirement, essentially. We're not going to remove it. Doesn't meet the standard to remove. And the person at the White House and the social media team wrote back and said, this wasn't a rhetorical question. Right. I mean, talk about coercion. Was it just yeah. this one team? Or what are you finding in your lawsuit? How many people were behaving this way? Oh, it was systemic throughout the entire federal government. What we see, whether it's the FBI, you know, we, we deposed uh, Elvis Chan and found out the depth under which Facebook um, and, and the FBI and Twitter were coordinating censorships. Uh, the, the piece that you talk about, I think, is extremely troubling because what we found in those emails, which people can go to our website, which we're posting at aggjefflandry.com, what you'll see in there is that it didn't matter if you were a Democrat or a Republican. So they went out and they censored Tucker Carlson. They also instructed Facebook to take down Robert Kennedy's post. Now, this is a gentleman, so think about this, Robert Kennedy, the son of a former U.S. Attorney General, nephew of a U.S. Senator and a President of the United States. And because he did not fall in line with the White House's messaging in dealing with COVID-19, he was censored. And so, and Tucker was censored the same way. These are the things that we are uncovering in this case. And we intend to get down to this evidence and then show the American people the extent by which the federal government believes they know better than us. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, you have these social media companies. People talk about them censoring all the time. But now we're hearing through your research and this case that ultimately the White House is putting pressure on a lot of these social media companies and who else to censor individuals? Oh, look, the White House, the FBI, the NIH, the um, CISA, which stands for Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, go figure that. Now, this agency is supposed to ensure that the infrastructure, that our internet stays up, that people don't hack into it, that they don't have the ability to um, take hostage vital infrastructure in this country. All of a sudden, this agency had agents working seven days a week, even on the holidays, nights and days, determining what was information, misinformation, disinformation, dealing with elections. 
That's what this case is uncovering. Wow. And so it is. It's, a, it's, it's an unbelievable case. Um, we just had a federal judge yesterday in the case, the federal judge in this case, just granted us more discovery, just compelled CISA to give us more information because the information that they allegedly gave us, which they said it was it, after the depositions, we found out we're not. And so it's like every time we ask the government a question, they're only giving us half the truth. Imagine if me and you did that to say the FBI and the Justice Department. So you talk about how this case is one of the most important First Amendment rights cases in a generation. Where does it stand right now? Because you filed this in May, okay? Yes. So we are already into the new year. What is next for this? Do you think the Supreme Court will take it up? Oh, I think this case could very likely go all the way to the Supreme Court. I do. Um, I don't think this case is in any way close to being complete. In fact, the question is, do we really want to complete it fast? Because every time we mm. peel back, every time we go through more discovery, we find more perversive things that the federal government was engaged in. How many documents are you talking? Huh? How oh, much? Oh, oh. Thousands, tens of thousands of documents wow. we're having to pour through, and depositions as well. You know, we deposed Anthony Fauci right before uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, we have a subpoena to uh, depose Jen Psaki, which is on stay by the Fifth Circuit right now, where he said, Look, you need to go get more information. But again, this is a case, I do, I believe that this is one of the most important First Amendment cases this century. Wow. Attorney General Landry, appreciate what you're doing. We'll have to check back in with you because oh, this yeah. sounds so pervasive and appreciate what you're doing. Thanks for being here with us on set. Thank you for having us.